Syracuse and Georgetown both coming off disappointing losses to unranked teams, but both still in the top 10 when they meet Thursday night. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you here on the College Basketball Preview Show, brought to you by the California Almond Board as we bring in our college basketball columnist here on CBSSports.com, Gary Parrish. And uh, Gary, obviously disappointment for both these teams, but uh, with Villanova's loss this week to UConn, it's not as bad for Syracuse in terms of the standings. But I want to start with Georgetown's loss because that was a bad one. At Rutgers, what would you take out of it? But that they're still not ready to dominate bad and average teams the way an elite team should. I mean, there's nothing wrong with losing, particularly on the road, but you can't lose to bad teams if you're supposed to be great. Georgetown now has three losses to unranked teams this year. You can't do that and be thought of as elite. So this team is clearly vulnerable, even if it doesn't look like it at times when it's blowing out, say, Duke. Gary, what about Syracuse? Because they struggled offensively against Louisville, against that zone that Rick Pitino's put out there. And, and they've struggled against Rick Pitino in the past, so that's nothing new. They've, they've lost five straight against Louisville. But before that, they struggled to put away Connecticut. Two weeks ago, they struggled at DePaul. So this wasn't a brand new thing. What are you, what are you seeing from Syracuse right now? Well, in the big picture, they're still fine. You know, they're still 24-2. and two. That's tremendous. But now they do have two home losses to borderline top 25 teams. One in if it happens once, you can sort of call it an accident. But two is a sign of something larger. Teams like Kentucky and uh, Kansas would never lose two home games. So I think this shows that what I've long believed. Look, Syracuse has put together an incredible body of work, but I don't, I've never quite been ready to put them in that top tier with a Kansas and a, and a Kentucky uh, based on I don't think they have the same kind of roster where if, you know, if Kentucky, if DeMarcus Cousins doesn't play well, they've still got Eric Bledsoe, Patrick Patterson, John Wall. If Kansas, if, if, if Sharon Collins doesn't play well, they've still got Cole Aldridge, Marcus Morris, Xavier Henry. I don't know that Syracuse can afford for its best players to take a night off, and when they do, they can take losses. Well, well that best player has been Wes Johnson all season long, but, you know, he's been dealing with the, the bruised thumb, he, an illness earlier. Do they need him to get back to dominating the way they were, or, co or can he be the guy that's, that's dishing off to Routens, that's letting Jardine score, that's getting Joseph and Jackson involved? I think they can win some games like that, but not go Final Four, win a national championship like that. Look, Syracuse has long been obviously good, but like I said, they're not built like Kansas or Kentucky. They're closer to Ohio State. One star and a bunch of really good pieces around that star. That's not a bad formula, but it requires the star to show up or else. Lately, they flirted with the what else, so Wesley has to get right and get going. All right, what about uh, Georgetown? You know, uh, after the, if you go back to the first game between these two teams, Georgetown dominated the first three and a half minutes, up 14 nothing, then outscored by 31 the rest of the way. So th they were blown out. What do the Hoyas have to do better in this ballgame against Syracuse? Well, let's not talk about the Hoyas in general. Let's talk about Chris Wright. I mean, he was held to single digits uh, for the fourth time when, when, uh, in six games when Georgetown lost for the third time in six games. There's a connection. Georgetown is 16-0 and when Chris Wright scores in double figures, 2-6 and when he doesn't. So this is pretty simple. When, you know, Greg Monroe can do whatever it is Greg Monroe does, Austin Freeman can do whatever it is Austin Freeman does. When Chris Wright scores, Georgetown wins. When he doesn't, they usually lose. And uh, so, you know, but pay attention to him. There's bigger things going on in the game, but uh, the way this season has unfolded, you can look at a box score at the end of it, look at Chris Wright's numbers, and figure out whether Georgetown won or lost. That's, uh, that means there's a lot riding on him. All right, Gary. Syracuse has won 10 of the last 13 against Georgetown, including this year, but they haven't won in D.C. since 2004. Who wins this one? You know, it's tough because you see, you know, Georgetown be so good at home against Duke and Villanova. Uh, but then you've seen them struggle. You know, uh, again, I, I'll take the home team just because I've seen Georgetown beat other really good teams there. But, uh, you know, uh, picking a team that just lost to Rutgers to beat Syracuse seems a little insane. I'll still go that, rec that, <laughs> der that direction. We'll see how it all plays out Thursday night, Gary. Thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks, guys. All right, folks, for more on the Big East battle, be sure to keep it right here with CBSSports.com. That'll do it for the College Basketball Preview Show. Brought to you by the California Almond Board. Become a pro snacker this season with a handful of California almonds. For Gary Parrish, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.